One nice thing about it is that uh, this guy recedes from my brain pan, you know. It's hard not to take him home. It's hard not to see the world through his eyes, especially when you are, that is your job, to see the world through his eyes so that you can put words in his mouth and, and, and embody his actions or create his, you know, or let him tell you his actions, as it were. You're the best kind of, the best moments of writing these characters are when they tell you what it is they're going to do next, and then you just sort of type it. She said, um, are you sitting down? And I said, yes. And she said, Saturday Night Live saw this tape, and Lauren Michaels wants to meet you. And I was like, what the? I mean, I seriously, I went in. He was three hours late. I was had <laughs> relentless diarrhea, horrible fear. And I just sat down with him, and, he, and it was 95. It was when they had fired everyone that year. It was like, you know, there were maybe three people left. And he said, you know, the show is a phoenix, and it has risen many times. And this is another one of those times that we hope it rises. If you have an ear for what's good and you hear something, it goes right in. Everybody was able to contribute something. You know, that wasn't on the page. And that was the selectivity of the producers. But uh, that was a gift, you know, uh, made think, my life possible. Do you think that's one of the keys of being a great showrunner of a, of a show? I mean, we're, you know, we're yeah. talking about the Pantheon, the classic, yeah. the one that's referred to all the time. It's as to, make the, to make the atmosphere uh, so that they can easily contribute, so they want to contribute. There's this whole story that you're not showing, which is in some ways is the story that's really going to invest you the most in the, the case that these guys are so desperate to solve, is who is this person and how did they die? And, and it's a mystery that you can only solve at the end, right? So, you know, for me to, to, to have every crime occur on screen and, and everyone involved to, to know them in advance, I mean, it, it, it makes it more character driven and less plot driven, I think. Me, I, I'm more of a school, uh, as Noah was saying, that, that I would love a scene to work without words. And if I could tell a story without having to um, feed it to the audience, then that to me is, is, a, is a much more clever way of telling a story. I like the idea that we do comfort TV, that it's, you know, there are plenty of beautiful shows. Comfort is not what they offer. Um, if anything, they make you uncomfortable, and that's part of what they're trying to do, and that's great, but that's not what I do. And that's not, you know, what we wanted to do. We wanted to do something where we wanted to hang out with us. And the other thing we kept saying to ourselves, we want to do something that we would watch. Well, I know for me in season two, I had two research trips to Kentucky that made a huge difference for me because I really was foreign to that world. That was, I, you know, again, I could have been writing about aliens um, until, until I went to Kentucky and spent time with the, with the marshals and spent time with the straight state troopers and we actually did have apple pie moonshine and things that ended up in the show were based in a reality that I could now picture, remember, understand, recite. To me, place is character. I mean, I don't know that Justify would be Justify without Kentucky. <laughs> without Harlan. That's so much a part of the DNA of what that show is and what makes it unique. The beauty of television is that it's it's a character-driven medium. I know that's a cliche and you've heard it before, but it's really true because what, why are people tuning in? They're tuning in to hang out with these people, especially on a show like Parks and Rec, which is, you know, it's not it's not Breaking Bad where it's like a cliffhanger, like what's going to happen? Like who's going to die? It's like, it's no, it's you want to hang out with these people. So so you would be you would be a fool, I think, not to take the essential elements from these human beings who are playing these characters and, and sort of imbue the characters with their characteristics in some cases. I had one episode, so I was like, oh, I'm done. Cool. <laughs> Put it out. I got time, but... Um, I initially sold the show to them, and then they were like, you need a showrunner, which is what they typically do for new writers. My management in an agency happened to represent Larry Wilmore, so they were like, oh, you should meet with him and see if you guys vibe, and maybe he can be your supervisor or showrunner at the end of the day and so we met up and just bonded and clicked and I really loved him so much and at, at the end of the meeting he was just like you know I, I would love to write this with you and I was like heck yes 